So I had a request to show off Handbrake and how to use it with movies. And so I'm gonna do just that. I've got a pretty good movie right here. I think anyway, one of my favorites. I'm just gonna go ahead and plop it on in and see what we got. So now I, how, how I have it set up is it'll automatically open up Handbrake when it, when it figures out it's a DVD. But look, <laughs> there it is. Okay, the volumes comes up obviously you want to do Inception, but if you have a video on another hard drive for some reason, or like a DVD file on, on somewhere else, you could also scan that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and open it. It'll take, it really depends on the DVD, it'll take anywhere from like a couple minutes to like 15 minutes. Uh, and I don't know what, what are the contributing factors in making it faster or slower. Looks like this is gonna be a quick one, so that's good. All right, so now we all have it scanned. Um, as you can see, just by the just default, the longest chunk of information will automatically be selected. That's because obviously it's the it's the movie. All these other 11 minute things are probably deleted scenes, special features, trailers, stuff like that. Uh, but we want the the main movie. Let's just get rid of all this. I have it selected as universal, uh, and I have that selected as my default. Uh, it's the full size DVD. Uh, there is no need to, I have, you know, two terabytes of space, there's no need to make it a small, teeny, tiny iPod version. And then uh, a couple months later I realized, man, this is crap, so now I have to rescan it. Uh, so that's just silly. So everything I, all my TV shows, movies, everything I scan, I scan with the universal format. One caveat is that if you have an older phone, like an iPhone 3G, with a, with a smaller resolution, it actually won't work. Since they're ripped from DVDs, they're not copy protected, so you can put it on any any device you want. The logo will actually has a live updating logo, so this bar, live updating progress. Usually it'll take a little, this film is about two and a half hours, so it'll probably take anywhere from three to four hours. Uh, I guess depending on how, how, how fast your disk drive is, how powerful your computer is. But uh, that's, that's just about it. All right, so now we have this, uh, this file right here, as you can see. That is definitely Inception. Hey, you know, I've used before. Listen to me, you drive carefully, all right? Yeah, everything down there is going to be as stable as hell. Anyways, love this movie. Okay, so. Uh, now, in the case for me, I do something a little bit differently because I put all of my movies on an external hard drive. So I'll, I'll just do that right now. Got my thingy right here, and then I'll click my movies. Uh, and then what I will do is instead of just dragging it on, you see that plus sign, is I will hold down the command button. See how the plus sign disappears? And then I'll let go. And what that does is that it, it moves the file instead of copying it. So it's just one file, keeps it clean and simple. Uh, that takes just a second for it to get going. Alright, so there we go. Now, uh, you can see, uh, let's see, default open with iTunes is the default, so that's good. We'll just double click it. Now, sometimes it is a good idea, so you go into iTunes, preferences, and then in the advanced pane, um, say copy files. In some cases, you might want to copy files. Say you have a, a movie on your flash drive or you have some content on your flash drive and you want that, you don't want it on the flash drive because the flash drive is unplugged and plugged in and plugged out all the time. So you might want to copy it in those cases, but since I want to keep the file on the hard drive, I will not select that. This is where we uh, go and get some information. So you click Command I, you've got summary info, you know, all these little tabs here. Uh, the most important tab is the artwork. Uh, that bare minimal should be done. Of course, you can do more information as well. Yeah, so that's pretty good. So I'll just take this and I will say, bring it into iPhoto. Say crop it right here and then, and uh, I think that looks pretty good. Another, uh, one great resource you can use is a, a website called dvdtown.com. And this, it has all the other information that you might need to use that you can just copy and paste. All this other information, okay? So I am actually going to use this other information. So first we'll drag the artwork. I want to add more information, so I'll go ahead and go to the info. Uh, the year was 2010. Genre, this says action, mystery, sci-fi, thriller. That's really a lot, so I'll just say action, comma, sci-fi. There we go. And really, that's just about it. If you get the year, genre, and the uh, the art, that's really, that's really it. That's all there is to it. 
And so now all that's left is uh, take your eye device or any device and sync it over. Plug that guy in and uh, watch the movie. That's about it. One thing you're going to want to look out for are Sony DVDs and Pixar, AKA Apple DVDs. They do this really tricky thing where they like have like 5,000 versions of the DVD. So if you try to rip Toy Story 3, uh, unless if you're patient enough to sift through and rip every single one of those copies, uh, you'll never find it. Uh, luckily, um, these days most DVDs and Blu-rays uh, come with a digital copy for free. Um, the one caveat to that is of course it is gonna be copy protected, um, but still. Uh, hopefully this helps and it's very useful because it's a great application. Uh, all Mac users really should have this application. It's very easy to use and it's extremely useful.